uh, doing here from rural Cyprus, from my abandoned village. And if you want to learn more about that, if you're new here, then go and watch my very first few videos posted. And that will give you some more idea about exactly where I am and how we live frugally off grid. If you've brought away some questions, I'm happy to answer those as per normal. And I do two lives a week, one on Monday, one on Wednesday on this channel. The times are in the description below and random Thursday lives, different Thursdays, no particular Thursdays and no particular time. So do check those out too. And my other channel is linked below as well. And I'm going to let you know in a bit something that I'm going to be talking about on my live on Wednesday about how we've been asked to go on the TV programme and we have declined. And so more about that. But I'll talk about that a bit more later on. And that's going to be my topic to talk about on the Wednesday live. So if you've got questions, that's where to put them. Today's episode is always about lots of different topics, lots of bits and pieces. So something for everybody. Let's see what we've got today. My first topic is my section I call Let's Look at a Book I Took from My Book Nook. So just looking at a random book that I've pulled off my bookcase that isn't a novel. And I found this one today. Bird Feeder's Handbook. And the reason I pulled this one off was I told you on my last episode, I think on Wednesday's one, how we'd actually gone to um, put a bid in online at an auction. Hello to you two. <laughs> I was telling you how I put a bid on for a bird book and we didn't get it. went for, I think I said 28 euros. This is an English bird book, but Obviously, European, we get a lot of birds. They all come here for the winter. A lot of countries tell me they don't have sparrows anymore. They're in Cyprus. <laughs> We've got literally hundreds just in our elephantus trees, uh, which are the enormously tall yuccas where the trunks are so wide, they look like elephant legs and elephant feet, and they nest there. So this has got a lot of birds. It's got bits on nesting and things like this, bird watching, different bill shapes here. So you've got things like that. It's a good reference book, even though we don't have a lot of these birds. Funny enough, our owl, our main owl that we have here, um, it's called the cypress owl. <laughs> And it is only in Cyprus. Um, just the habitats, the um, feeding, what they eat. And different birds do eat different things. Although they're partial to similar things too. Lou says, want some pigeons? No, we don't have pigeons here. <laughs> we have collar doves. Um, I'm sure you know they have the ring on the neck, the white ring. And I first thought they were pigeons. They're like, no, we don't have pigeons in Cyprus. They're collar doves. Yeah, I'm sure you'll want the sparrows. Between them and the cicadas, it's noisy in the countryside. <laughs> I think that's it. You hear it more because there is nothing else. I get used to the cicadas. It's just, yeah, um, they're slowly going now. This is towards the end of it. Uh yeah, different colonizations, bird profiles. This is a bit I use a lot. How to identify birds, first of all, before you even have to do it. I've got on my tablet, I think I mentioned this, where it's an app, but you have to scroll. It's only for Cyprus and you scroll through all the birds. But obviously there's quite a lot. We have some very pretty color birds here. Um, and you've got each bird separately. And then lots about each bird. So I like this book. You have to, yeah, Mr. Sounder, it, it's tropics, isn't it? You just think of tropics and holidays and 
sunshine and palm trees. And this year they've gone in all trees. Normally they do sit more in the pine trees, but this year they're like everywhere. There's a real influx of them. I know there's different types, and I have done videos on this before. There's, I think, three or four different types. Some come out every year. Some come out every hundred years, and we had that where we had two at the same time and we've got another lot now with the original lot home yes home for you oh look blue piggins <laughs> piggins i had pe a piggin i had pigeon to eat one time um a I say boyfriend, I'm friends with him. He just happens to be male and being both single is before I knew Mike. In fact, at the same time, I knew Mike as well after that. Um, we used to go on holiday with each other and if we were to go out for a meal or something, we weren't a couple couple, but we were partners as in if you went to a function and you needed a partner, that kind of thing. I'm still friends with him now and uh we he took me one time to this like expensive restaurant because we'd take it in turns and uh he took me to this expensive restaurant it's one of those restaurants where blue would know but most of the menu you didn't even know what on earth it was it wasn't like a french restaurant or something like that i didn't know a lot of the stuff and he went through all the stuff and i was like a lot of that kind of food I wouldn't eat. I'm not one of these people who eat burgers, but it was weird food rather than just different food. I'm one for trying things. And I said I fancied some meat, but there was nothing normal meat. And there was pigeon. I said, oh, I don't fancy that because in England you think of pigeons as really dirty. I was like, oh, no. And he said, oh, you're like it. it's like a rich chicken in a way. So I ordered it. He said, if you don't like it, leave it. And I had it and it was actually quite nice. Rats with wings, yeah, street thugs they is. They sure are. Um, oh, and there's um, the collar doves here. They walk around with me like a little duck. Obviously, I don't, can't carry my camera around with me, but one day I need to, it's where I'm watering, need to go out and try and get him following me. I filmed him the other day. I don't think I, it's literally filming me with him. Uh, it's wood pigeon restaurants, not street rat. <laughs> a pigeon's a pigeon. <laughs> there you go, wood pigeon. That's funny, that just as you said it, look, wood pigeon. And it would tell you the differences. In the countryside, farmers regard the wood pigeon as a pest because of its appetite for cereals, root crops, Normally wary as a result, this large pigeon becomes tame in built-up areas where you see it walking towards a supply of food or water with a typically pigeon-toed gait. The male often advertises his presence in the territory, which may be no more than a single tree, simply by sitting conspicuously. A wood pigeon on a bear tree is difficult to miss. Yeah, they're not, not afraid, are they? Oh, I thought they would have had, had collared up there. Perhaps he comes somewhere else. Uh, I love owls. I really do love owls. Tawny owl. Love owls. Little owl. That's a little bit like our one, but not quite. He's tiny. Oh, you've got pictures of him on some of my intros i show the owl quite a lot and i've done a video on him in fact i've got a couple of videos on him a couple of times great spotted woodpecker so we have things like that here blue says wood pigeons will decimate crops just by snipping the tops off they don't even eat them the country vandal cousin of the street rat right that's like goats here that's why it's so devastating if just one gets in they only have to bite a leaf of the olive tree and the whole tree dies they've got some poison inside house martin and swallows we've got loads of those here oh my goodness if i'm ever on the live and you hear really loud just outside of me, 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 
that's these swallows because they keep trying to nest just here because we've got a covered area of patio just here. Pied wagtail, got loads of wagtails, all different sorts of wagtails we have here. Wren. Wren. Dunnock and gold crest. There. So it's quite a good book. This was Mike's actually. Spotted Flycatcher and Field Fair. Don't know the name Field Fair. I'm not really someone who knows birds very well. I probably know more uh, birds of Cyprus than I do English birds. I know the obvious. Robin, we have Robins here. And I, I'm pretty sure it's the same one or family of he sits in the same place every year here just outside the window where the fence is every year so i don't know how long they live but if it's not that one it's probably a um family of blackbird blackbird song thrush and yes, the bird sounds you hear in the background of my videos are the birds. It's pretty continual. Missile thrush and long-tailed tit. There. Blue tit. We have loads of blue tits. And we have, I'm not sure what it is. It's, it's like that one, but it's all yellow. And a bright yellow real bright yellow i'm not sure i'd have to look on my app which one it is i haven't got a good memory of new things great tip yeah he's more like that but he hasn't got the black he's basically all yellow but bright bright as anything european roller is one of our pretty birds most of europe gets that and it's when it flies underneath, it's um, like kingfisher blue. It's a really bright blue underneath. We rarely see them because they're normally higher up the mountain. And if we do see them here, they're up on sort of the um, electric poles or whatever you call them up there. Colt it and nut hatch. Tree creeper, we've got loads of those here, families of chaffinch. There. We've got back here again, we have it every year. The it's a black flamingo. And uh I was going to do a little bit about that. I forgot. Uh black flamingo. I've got pictures of it. I'll probably put it on the community post. It's in the Aquatiri Salt Lake. We have two big salt lakes in Cyprus. One over this side of Cyprus and one Larnica side. And he always comes to the Akrotiri Salt Lake. I think I'll put that up on my community post and I'll write about it. It's a condition that it has and very rare. Uh, goldfinch and greenfinch. Siskin, I don't know that. Siskin and bullfinch. Yeah, I don't know, siskin, never even heard of that word. As I say, I'm not a bird person. House sparrow. I did a video on those when they were all nesting here. And I've done the dawn chorus when they get up and flying off out of the trees. And then uh, when they come back at dusk. So there is a video somewhere. I think one of my playlists says something about nature, creatures and animals. I think that's a playlist. It'd be in there if anyone's interested in that. Starling, they're noisy. I'm not keen on these birds with the pointy beaks. They always remind me of like horror films because that's the ravens and all that, isn't it? Magpie, we have hundreds of magpies here every year. And they're here, um, they fight with the hoopy birds. If you don't know what they are, again, look at my playlist, Nature Creature and All Animals. And there's lots of uh, videos on the hoopy because that's the most common bird in my region, which a lot of Cypriots never get to see one. You've got to go countryside. And we had a whole family of them. We I can't remember if they had about 
seven or eight babies and i've got all that in the film jay is the other one there yeah crows that's what i say crows and rooks it's rooks isn't it in the horror films mostly carrion crow and rook and then one just tuning in these aren't cypress birds these are english birds it's a book i've just got and saying which ones i've got similar or the same jackdaw Ooh, look who's bdi me <laughs> mm. And then it's things, how to attract birds, building bird boxes. We don't need to do that here. <laughs> As I say, we get owls here. We see owls, owls more commonly than, I don't know, let's think of a bird that you'd get in England. Um, I don't know, one that's not, not uncommon, but you wouldn't see all the time, maybe let's say a crow. Lou says, still watching, listening, trying to find find my kitchen so I can make any dinner. Oh, dear. Um, yeah, so there's all different ways of and styles of bird houses, nesting boxes. The trouble with these sort of things here is we get climbing snakes. Uh, it's a bit like if you put a bird table out that's low to the ground and the cat can get it. Here, if you put a bird box in, in the uh, tree, you're more likely to get a snake in it waiting. So we don't really do that sort of thing here. Uh, if you do want to make one, try and use something a bit obscure out there, like an old shoe or an old boot, and just be obscure with it. I don't know what that says, Blue. Atolls. 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 You toll. You toss. I don't know what that is. I'll just go through loads of variations. <laughs> Grains and seeds. So this is what I say to you about different birds really have different preferences. Same as their nests. You know, all bird nests are completely different. And you can tell by the... Uh, when you see a bird nest, what type of bird it is. I love doing that, getting a bird nest that we find often in the olive trees when I cut those back. Oh, uh-ohs. Oh, uh-ohs, uh -oh, uh -oh, snakes, right, yes. <laughs> Boots and teapots. Yeah, teapots make awesome homes for the blue tits and robins. Yeah, you know those old really big urns, like tea urns that they had in the canteens? They're fab. They're really good. Yeah, coconuts. As a child, we always used to make coconut hanging things for birds. This is a safer way for us to feed birds, but don't need it. <laughs> don't need it here. I do put water out. Oh, and we have the, I think it's the swifts or the swallows. I'm not sure which one it is. Comes here at night and, well, evening, and they swoop down into our swimming pool. And they're still doing it this year. And the pool is totally empty. And they go right down the bottom. Luckily, it's a long pole because they get almost to the end. But because they come so deep to try and find the water that does not exist, they haven't got that much time to come back up again. Oh, dear. And the other thing is Kit, our little boy cat, he keeps jumping in there and playing. And I said to Mike, one day he's going to realise we've got water back in there again. That's going to be really... Ooh. So, yeah, we put water out. Um, yeah, so building boxes. Then you've got lots of bits about looking for their wings and their tails. Just ways of identifying and telling you more about the birds. Formation flying, hovering, hopping and walking, perching, climbing, head nodding more hens i always think of more hens preening all sorts of things bathing molting dust bathing sleeping i've got a lot of dust bathing footage of the hoopy birds up, um, up there flocks benefit of flocks and that's how we get our birds they're always nesting naturally so yeah i thought that was a good oh i got itch again got a, a good little book there i thought to share with you guys let me just have a drink. I'm so dry. So dry. Oh, 
Um, Blue says, the coconut upside down is perfect for blue tits. Yeah, because no other bird can grab the coconut except them because they can hang upside down. It means the bigger, more aggressive birds can't chew them off and steal the food from them. Yeah, like the pesky magpies. Now, I was always quite against the magpies. As I say, they fight our hoopy birds and go into the hoopy birds' nest. Until I saw one keep um, hovering, probably my height, maybe a bit higher, in a tree and out, in, out, in, out. And I thought, it's not a tree where the hoopy birds are. It's one of our sort of palmy trees. And I was like, what's he doing in there? And I was like, oh, that's so annoying. They really are. Oh, and they hover over our cats as well. Just intimidate, intimidate our cats. And I thought, what's this one doing? I'm so cross with it. And then as he went in and out again, I saw there was a snake head in there. So as the magpie went into it, he re flew back as the snake head kept coming in and out with him. And in the end, he grabbed the snake and he got it and he killed it. So I'm like, because it was a bad snake, I'm like, well, okay, it's nature, isn't it? You've got to let things work as they work. And in that respect, I leave the magpies. I'm like, well, okay, you're doing your job. So keeps the bad snakes down hey hope bus how are you doing there can't stay long my granddaughter so yeah you were saying that on the uh whose was it we were on today i've been on so many channels uh jimmy's think jimmy's yes you were saying there i want to say hello and give a thumbs up lovely thank you very much yeah i post your link as much as you pop in on people's channels um Let's go on to my next section for today. This is So Grow Mo and Ho Ho Ho. So my gardening section. And I'm going to share with you today, I thought I'd talk about compost. There's a lot of people keep asking me questions about compost because if you know or don't know, there is absolutely zero soil here. There never has been. And everything you see in my films, it is all homemade, my own compost. So it's taken years to build up. This year was the first year I put some manure in it because we can now take manure from the stables and it's well broken down. If you see, can't remember which video, but it's fairly recently, probably my last raised bed video, the last one I've done of update of raised beds. Yes, it was that. And you see me tipping it in, and I put something about it's the manure. It is literally dust. That's how well broken down it is. We don't take it from there until it's usable. Hi there, Auntie Ellen. Just want to stop by, give you a thumbs up and support your channel. Lovely. Make sure, guys, you've all seen my last video I've um, loaded today. Very interesting. Very interesting. And I'm going to talk on my Wednesday live about we were um, asked to do be in an English TV program that is just airing now, and we verbatimly we just declined, and it's very interesting <laughs> why we declined like venomously. We're like, no way! It's not about being on telly; it's what the program is. So we get English telly, so I'm going to watch it and just see how they portray it. So, yeah, we had the chance to be on. I've done loads of TV work, but Mike hasn't. And we were asked to be in this TV program. It's a series. And we were asked to be in it. And we're like, no way. But I'll talk about that on Wednesday on my live. I think that will be my topic. <laughs> there will be a lot of people out there go, oh, wow, well, wow, well, be on telly and just do it. And I'm really worried that's why the, what the people are doing in it. And how they've swayed it, but I'll explain all that on Wednesday. So we're talking about compost piles, as I say, because everything I grow in here is my own compost. Um, so I just thought, as people ask me advice, I'm I'm no guru, I'm no expert. I do things, you know, I try so many different methods and I make comparisons. So we've all got different ways, different methods and different things available. There is no rule book that says this is the way and it works for everyone. So we all do different. 
but these are my thoughts. I thought I'd talk first <clears throat> about how many compost piles you need, because this is quite a debate. Most people try to have three. Now, a lot of people find the method of three stages and do it that way. So they have it start in one, then they move it to the next one and start the next one. And then the second one, they move on to the third one. That's a good way for turning it over. It depends how much land you've got and how much compost you need. I would say you definitely need three, but for me, I don't do this stages one. So it's not going through the stages. It will literally be pile. Um, most of our compost comes from mowing our hay and our straw. So it comes from that. So obviously, I don't want to put all that in one at the same time. So I do, I've got a really big one now behind the chicken coop if you see the old chicken coop we don't have chickens if you see the old chicken coop um it's behind there so it's the whole length of the chicken coop and then i have two now by the side of that so what we do when we cut down the grass stuff i will put a bit in all of those i now also have two down the very end of the hoogal area which is right over the other side of the land that's because when mike cuts back that side it's just easier to throw it there but in those two i don't add anything else that is purely for each year when i build the hoogles up to use that as a straw or whatever layer so i don't put anything else in there all right if a few leaves come out or something i throw them in but we don't make with garden waste and that sort of thing or kitchen waste for me it works for me i never add water we get a short rain season here so it gets dampened and i try and turn it at that point everyone does different and just because I say something doesn't mean it's right or wrong. But I find a lot of people complain about smelly compost. And that's for three reasons. One, it's too wet. Two, you haven't got air manoeuvring enough. So either turn it over or make smaller layers of it, each thing. So if you've got wet grass or dry grass and then it rains, it gets clumpy or you haven't got enough of different nutrients and things in there that are going to break that down. So for me, for me, I hate doing things like this because people think I'm sort of saying, oh, your way's not right. For me, this is how I make my compost. Uh, hi there, Mayfield Ranch is in. Uh, do, 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 do. Blue says, awesome hum, must be really difficult to turn that rocky desert into a thriving garden. I'm sure you're going to get there and it's going to end up being an Eden. Oh, bless you. Bless you. I've got plans. I'm actually going to change things up um, in the autumn. Me and Mike have talked and we've made some little plans. Going really mix it up. <laughs> um, Mayfield Roger, I do three also, but I don't move them. No, that's what I'm saying. I don't turn mine over. What I do is when I get to that stage when... I want the strawy bits or compost. It mostly it's for my raised beds are the main ones. Then I use that or I take the whole top off if I don't need that. And it's not decomposed. Use the bottom and then that's turned it all round and then I let the rest break up. I've never waited till the whole lot is compost because as I don't bother turning it, it's never all going to break down at the same time. Blue says, don't have room to make compost, so I blitz my kitchen scraps with water, let it ferment for a few days and mix in the soil. Yeah, and uh, old banana skins, do you do that method? I did do it for a while, but it was a bit smelly for me, so I didn't like it. You just put banana skins in water, let that evaporate. That makes a good fertiliser. You do have water. Yeah, it depends where you are where you are and what your method is and, as I say, what you're putting in it. Now, this really long uh, compost bin at the back of the chicken coop, I once I've put all that extra grass in, I then throw away what I call the really big stuff that I don't chop up. 
things like, you know, when you've got to squash your zucchini and you've let go or um, bugs get in it or whatever. I do chop it down a bit, but I don't chop it right back. I know that will never fully break down for years, but that goes in and it attracts the bugs in. And it also makes big air gaps in the rest of the stuff. So that very back one will be what I call a long-term one more. And then when the others are empty, that one's ready to use as well. And then any big bits, just chop, throw back in. And I always put a few bits of broken pallet on the bottom because I'm just doing it straight on the ground. So I put some... Um, broken bits of pallet so you've got that steppy bit you know how you have that lumpy bit so it's off the ground and it lets the air circulate underneath uh <laughs> don't need enough bananas to do that i'm sure it works well that was the other thing it takes so long so now if i have bananas i just chop the peel up and dig it in the ground and just leave it like that uh blue says don't separate them all it goes in the odd blender then a bucket yeah and what i've been doing now when i'm prepping i go and sit on the patio have a rubbish bucket there as in an old paint bucket chop everything out just keep throwing the skins and whatever in there and then i just chuck that on the compost so i'm not worried with this big um bed big heap if there's things in there that won't break down or will take ages, I just throw everything on the back there. If there's anything that you shouldn't put on the compost, I put that out on what we call the goat mound. You've seen where all the goats come down our driveway and on that bit of land there after our drive, we call it the goat mound and we throw anything there that won't break up. So let's talk about what are the good rotters the quick rotters or the hot rotters and things what maybe you shouldn't put on and things maybe you haven't thought to put on so if you can think of anything that you put on your compost that we might not think of then hit that key while i go through the list i have done um talk on this before but these are some different items so by no way have i covered everything because i've spoken about a lot of things before hot rotters so the activators leaves of comfrey plants common yarrow fresh weeds lawn clippings chicken droppings pigeon droppings now i know there's some controversial stuff there each to your own blue's got pigeons <laughs> So, yeah, I know there's some controversial stuff. There always will be in gardening. Uh, as I said before, I've got Mike's mum's old gardening books. You've seen those. And every solution is chemicals. <laughs> so things change and ideas are different. Um, all round balanced items, scraps from the kitchen, Use tea bags. Now, again, that's quite controversial because the actual bags, a lot of those are actually plastic. Use coffee grounds. I don't put my coffee grounds on. My coffee grounds, they're actually good on things like broccoli. So any brassicas, sprinkle your coffee grounds, particularly around the stalks. If you sprinkle around the stalks, that stops bugs climbing up the brassicas. So that's what I use my coffee grounds for. Annual flower plants, any plant clippings, used hay and straw, refuse from veg and their plants, manure with straw, young shrub clippings, used hops. Now, I've heard this lately. I've been reading a book about picking hops, and they're probably one of the most fantastic things you can use. Blue says, just break the bag, empty the tea onto the ground um bird feathers yes i've said about this before bird feathers and old bird nest i'm always using those um with the eggshells any broken eggshells in there clover now i'm going to go into clover in a minute clover wash kelp and seaweed i'm going into in a minute fish meal i'm going into in a minute because he's come to something else i want to talk about husk and shells from nuts now Again, I would really put that in my long-term compost. 
eggshells again my eggshells some go in the compost but on the whole i really crush them up small and put them around the bottom of plants that i'm growing my veg to stop um slugs slugs and snails and if you find it doesn't work you need to crush them smaller they've got to be really shardy nail and hair clippings again that's from the bird nest isn't it i keep finding my different cats furs in the uh, bird nest softer garden trimmings and weeds obviously be careful with that um items from the home plain cotton cloth but not with print on cheese cloth plain cardboard make sure it's got no waxing ink or glue we're all right here with toilet rolls we have environmental glue it's not actually glue but do watch things like that old burlap or canvas bags and sacks used paper towels paper bags grocery bags i wish um a lot of countries would take the uh thought from the americans i don't know if they still use the brown grocery bags but i don't get why the countries don't use brown grocery bags for your shopping any plain paper Cardboard tubes from all sorts of things, kitchen foil, rolls, um, gift wrap rolls, cardboard egg boxes and cardboard boxes. Um, you can also um, make sure you turn regularly. We talked about to break down everything. Add items with nitrogen will speed up the process I spoke of. Um a good heap does not require watering unless different um, different sizes of items with larger items not breaking down or not enough variety in the heap. Ask for waste vegetables from your vegetable market or supermarket and check all contents with care for glue, pesticides, etc. before use. Items that rot slowly. Fallen leaves. Tougher shrub trimmings. Trimmings that are woody, wood shop sawdust and shavings, I've got something to say about that, old carpet paddings, but check no chemical treatment. Things not to use, ash from coal, not ash from Ashley's uh, allotment diaries, <laughs> household pet litter or feces, nappies, diapers, magazines and leaflets or posters now your herbal activators comfrey that's high in nitrogen potassium calcium and phosphates dandelion has high amounts of valuable iron copper and potash Barium acts like a magnet that draws earthworms to a compost heap so that's something to really put in if you can. It also is high in good minerals. Yarrow is the herb that makes the biggest difference to a compost, even in small quantities. Valuable nitrates, copper, uh, phosphates, potash. And tansy helps because of the way it draws potassium out of the soil as it's growing. So that's a good start on that subject. I hope there was something there. I will continue with that and other gardening tips in the future. But I want to move on to my next section for the day. And you're going to love this. <laughs> this is my what to watch on your coffee break. Now, normally I say it's not about shout outs for channels. And it's not about a channel. It's always a specific video to watch. But <laughs> today is the whole channel because I was going through it trying to pick one video that was so calming, relaxing, chilling while you're having your cup of coffee. And I couldn't do it. If I had to pick one, if you'd give me a million pounds, if I picked one, maybe 
the coral reef. There's a coral reef video if I had to pick. But I'm more a scenic girl. I like scenery and that kind of thing and drone shots of scenery and that. <laughs> but I think overall, you guys possibly would pick the coral reef one, maybe. But because I couldn't choose, I'm giving you the link to the channel. And I'm going to type the channel in. It is in the links below. And in the links below, ooh, where's my mouse? Oh, there you are. In my links below, I think it's straight at the top of the description. And it's called something about what to watch on your coffee break. And some of you will know this channel. It's Peter Dell. And Peter does amazing, 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 amazing videos. Just so beautiful. I could just sit and watch them. And to be honest with you, some of his videos I've watched three or four times, which is why one of the reasons I've thought about going in on some of your channels under different icons, either because I keep watching the same video. It's not that I've forgotten I've watched it. Some videos I really like and I watch again. Um, so it gives you more thumbs up, more subscriptions. And also for that, some channels are gone and they haven't got another video up yet. And I've run out of videos to watch. So I go on another icon. Uh, some of Peter's videos that I like recently, he's done a great one on a paddle steamer. You'll have to go and watch it. The Puffin Billy Steam Train video I really liked. That's really cool. He's got lots of videos on different bridges in Australia. The cable car ones I actually like, again, because you see scenery as well with those. Aquariums, national parks. I like watching those ones, as I say, scenery. You can also see lots of tourist attractions because he's got them all labelled as to what the videos are. Oh, he's got a really cute one on koalas. And any of you guys don't know, they are not bears. So it's wrong to say koala bears. They're not bears. But yeah, oh, it's and the thumbnail on its own is so sweet. Lots of things. If you're interested in native birds of different countries, he's got videos on those. And he doesn't forget he's got a few videos on his own goings on with his chickens and flowers and things like that as well. So do go and check out Peter Dale. He's a great supporter of the channel and definitely one to watch if you just want to chill out, forget everything, put your feet up, have your coffee. Peter Dale is your channel. So do have a look at that. That would be great. On to my next section inspiration and creation i do like what i made there i do like paper craft i need to do more of this sort of stuff i'm just not as um careful that's not the word <laughs> i find intricate things quite difficult now but uh, that's probably my favorite form of art for me what i can do and people have asked for more of my paintings to see So I've, I think you haven't seen these ones. I did make a pile, but I've forgotten where I got up to. So forgive me if you've seen them again. I don't think you've seen these ones. So let's pull it back a little bit so you can see the whole thing. So we have this one. I like doing these sort of colour sunsets and different colour shading and that kind of thing. So there's that one. We have this one. I'm not very good at animals, but I'm not too um, upset by those cows. <laughs> upset by the cows. Oh, Dawn. I just can't find words I want to say. I think these cows are all right. <laughs> So again, bit of scenery. Uh, houses are okay. Trees not too bad. Yeah, bit of dabbing dobbing there going on. 
So yeah, not too bad that one. This one. Ooh. See again, colour. I like to play around with colours and things like that. I think that's kind of got a bit of atmosphere going on there with that sky. Yeah, that's not too bad. That reminds me of like these um when you go into some old person's house and they've got just seen and it's quite bland. You think, why did they buy that picture? Do you know what I mean? That almost I know there's a hump there, almost like a tour. But that sort of reminds me of, um, oh, what do you call them? Not the downs, the moors. The moors. Wrong sort of trees and things, but there you go. <laughs> the moors. Uh, oh, we've got three more yet. Just grabbed a bunch out. This reminds me of desert. There's a bit of green in there, but there is green in the desert. Call me silly, but I didn't know. When I went to Egypt, we're on the, like, tour bus, whatever you want to call it. And we were in, like, a, the really built-up area. Really built up and transport everywhere and people everywhere and high-rises and great multi-story flats all run down and everything and the guide said there's the pyramids I was like what I thought the pyramids were in the middle of the desert not right by high-rise flats I was so shocked by that did do people know that I didn't know that I always thought the pyramids the proper ones not like just random ones or Tutankhamun is and all that. And they're right by, let's say, let's say the pyramids are here and the high rise is here. They're not like on a different plane. They're literally, literally high rise pyramids. That was like really freaky. That was really, really astounding for me. I thought they were in the middle of the desert. They're not. They're not. So who knew that and who didn't know that? How would you know that? How would you know? Unless you've looked at a map or something. How would you know? So tell me. Or oh, unless you've been there. <laughs> that one. I quite like that one. Let's put it all in the frame. Pull fingers. I quite like that one. There's something about that. You've got the swirlies in the sea. You've got the nice purpley sunset going on. The rocks are interesting. You've got the rocks out to sea. Yeah, I quite like that one, actually. Yes. Uh, last one. These were done. This one says 2004. I just try and everything to find my niche. Some are from my head. Some are, I think they're all from my head, actually. I was going to say that I have got some that I sort of tried to copy bits out of books. No, these are all from my head, I think. I don't know. This one might have been from a book. I can't remember. No, I shouldn't think so, because any that say 2004 on the back were done at my... Um, special needs group so we didn't copy out of books then you just made you just think of something in your head and paint it because i think with the date on the back he told us you had to put the date on the back when you did a painting and i didn't do that I only did it if i was there yeah that's not bad i like old bridges that one's okay that one's okay Sorry, Helm, was just out of earshot. Are you talking about the pyramids being just outside Cairo? They're actually in Cairo. <laughs> That's the thing. That's what I'm saying. Literally, the high-rise flat is there and the pyramid is there. I can't believe it. It's Tutankhamun's tomb. There, I just could not, could not believe it. Could, I mean, it wasn't even set back. 
uh, I know you're thinking mm, doom, they don't build the pyramids after but you would think that is still one of the seven wonders of the world isn't it you would think the town couldn't have been built that close yep they're right there yeah, how, how were they allowed to, oh, I suppose it's one of those towns, isn't it, that's had to creep because of overpopulation. But anywhere else, you just wouldn't get away with that. I was, I was just shocked. I'm just going to keep on and on about it because it was the closeness of it. It wasn't just, oh, Cairo's there and the pyramids are over there. It's literally room with a view. <laughs> literally right there. Okay, now everyone's going to go and have a look on Google Maps. Let's move on to Nax, Hacks, Facts and Stats. Best roads in the world in Cairo. <laughs> Hi there, Corey and Daisy Cook. How are you doing? Nice to have you along today. I hope you're doing well. So my tips today, I was trying to find something a little bit more something for everyone tip most of these are about parsley i think there's one about garlic so tip for you to chop parsley to chop parsley quickly put a few sprigs in a teacup snip with kitchen scissors turn in the cup as you work round it that's pretty good tip number two Chew a piece of parsley after eating garlic to remove the smell from your breath. Tip three, this is the garlic one. Garlic cloves will never dry out if stored in a bottle of cooking oil. After the stored garlic is used, you can then use the flavoured oil for salad dressing. Another garlic tip. Rub stale bread pieces with garlic, cut into cubes, fry in butter and serve with soup or use with salad. And the last tip, a large piece of parsley placed in the saucepan when cooking cabbage or Brussels sprouts will minimise any odour or add a few bay leaves to the boiling water before adding the vegetables. This does not affect the flavour because I know a lot of stuff that you can uh, use to stop odours and everything, it can actually limit the flavour. I guess you two are cookie people that are in the chat right now. So did you know all those things? Very likely, very likely. What's your favourite things to cook? I need to, I keep saying it, I need to get into herbs. If I can sell our property, then in the spring, I want to go and get starter herbs and some fruit trees and some other garden bits and pieces. That is my plan. Okay. Oh, I know what you're here for. My joke section, Monday fun day. As though I do jokes on the Wednesday as well, just because people would be upset if I didn't. So Monday, fun day, jokes, quotes, puns and fun. And it's ended up mostly being jokes. <laughs> so I have some jokes for you. Blue says, not ones I've done, but I do sprinkle apple cider vinegar on brassicas that are steamed or boiled because it drops a bitterness. That's a really great tip, Blue. That's a really great tip. I like all your little tips. I like short, sharp, simple tips. Korean uh, Daisy says, I made kimchi with garlic. Oh, that's lovely. That's great. And if either of you want to put um, something in the comments to get us watching your channels, do check out each other's channel if you don't know of them. And let me know something that's on your channel that, People who watch this back later will go, oh, I want to watch that. Oh, I'll go over there. So this is your moment to put in something about your channel or just in general what your channel is about. Although, obviously, you two, your channel names are pretty straightforward. So use, use my chat 
I'm here as a community channel. I'm here not to restrict those in my chat to promoting their own channels. It's my way of thanking you for being here. So add what you like about your channel. Off you go. <laughs> I thought today the jokes, I would do holiday jokes, seeing as it's for most of us, apart from my poor little Aussie friends, it's summer. So I thought I'd do some holiday jokes for you. Where do sharks go on holiday? Why? Finland, of course. <laughs> oh dear. Do you get sharks there, Daisy? Do you get sharks? Blue gets some sharks now. I know Blue gets some sharks. Very rare, but there are sharks. We don't get sharks, not very often. We're safe to swim. Let's put it that way in Cyprus. We are safe to swim. Why did the robot go on holiday? He needed to recharge his battery. Du, du, du. <laughs> oh, my English not very good. I try to understand. Blue, if you're able to do the link for that, I'd really appreciate that for Daisy. Uh, <laughs> laugh out loud. It's all good, Hannah. I appreciate it. I'm still sorting out my channel, working on series because the internet is so awful. Took 32 hours to upload my video on Saturday. Oh, my goodness. I was uh, watching another channel in Portugal. Apparently, a lot of their internet's gone completely haywire. And it was taking him 10 minutes to upload a really long video. And it's now taken three days. <laughs> three days. I shouldn't laugh. We're lucky. We're lucky. It's funny because when we first had internet, we're on another service now because we can't choose services there just isn't choice because of where we live and Pursuri which is over there on another low level range they have a tower and we can see it and there's a open because we're up high we've got open straight across and they said no we can't have it you're not in our district but that would have been perfect we had it for a while and then uh, it's one of these suppliers where they take your money, give you good internet and then a few months down the line they start reducing it because they've got too many people using the one service so they bump it around. It wasn't, um, what do you call it, when you're limited, it was like you can use it all the time and they had too many people doing it and they called it whatever it was like free to use all the time type thing and they called it that to get people in on it and everyone's in on it they haven't got the oomph for it and so they started bumping certain times you'd notice it wasn't on then other times it would be off and and all that so we got fed up with it it was very cheap but as mike said no good paying cheap if you're not getting it half the time so it's better to go on it's not a contract um like you can only use so much he said it's better then to go on like limited because at least then you can use it all the time but i used to have to be so careful with lives doing that that's where i first started lives and we'd sort of look and it's oh can you do a short live and don't go in, on everyone's channel watch because we were that tight on it but we're with another system now. But I will talk about that soon because it's gone down in price. We're in another one now. And it's gone down in price and we've got more. Bizarre. Hmm, that's Cyprus for you. It's like petrol. Might go up. It goes down as well. So it's pretty good here. It's because they cap prices. So for when you hear like meat's gone up or dairy's gone up or whatever there's a cap here on everything so that's pretty good uh what's happening over here blue says we do get sharks in york yeah <laughs> um there we go daisy's channel's up there thanks for doing that blue really appreciate that i just saying hi to blue and blue saying hi back thank you all good you're so welcome lovely that's what we like so daisy make sure you go and check out blue's channel blue put your own link up put your link up so she can click on it 
Um, well, we joked. Why didn't the Egyptian mummy... Oh, funny that. Why didn't the Egyptian mummy go on holiday? He didn't want to unwind. <laughs> I like that. My son came here on holiday. Did you meet him at the airport? No, I already know him. <laughs> no, we don't. I felt loud. Sorry, my texting on the phone is poop. <laughs> oh, you don't. I thought you'd make a joke in York, yeah, <laughs> where they swim in. <laughs> but yeah, around England, they keep saying they see sharks now. Um, it wasn't a shark in the Thames, was it? Was it a porpoise or something a couple of years ago? What does bread do on holiday? It just loafs around. Where do fleas go on holiday? Hmm, search me. <laughs> search me. Where do sheep go on holiday? Bahamas. <laughs> Uh, I've no idea. I think they're dolphins at one point, possibly. Where did your mum go on holiday? Alaska. Oh, never mind. I'll ask her myself. <laughs> and last joke for today. Why did Humpty Dumpty have a great fall? To make up for his bad summer. <laughs> Oh dear, they're quite funny. Uh, I've got some big long jokes coming up. Okay, don't come running out of water. Well, I wanted to sort out my makeup and I keep putting it off, put it off because I've got other things more important. So I thought I would share that now <laughs> and I'm going to do it in my section Discover. Sort, declutter, and organize. And look, there is some makeup on there too. Some nice makeup. So I thought while we're chatting away, I would sort that out. My main makeup, I have stage makeup, obviously, but my main makeup. Oh, because Dawn told me to. No, we're a community channel here. We don't have rules. This is where I keep my main everyday makeup. It hasn't got things like perfumes and things in. Just got my main. See, it's there. It's just two compartments like this. So I thought I would sort it out. We have brushes, and I think this one's going to go very soon because it was my blue eye makeup, which is almost run out, and it's manky, but I have a tiny bit left. So I want to finish this up first with this. And look at the blue. That is like 1970s. <laughs> it's not from 1970s, but this is what in England in the 1970s everyone was wearing. I don't know if you can see the colour. I can't roll it up. There's none left. It was when that, the blue. I used to have a chef box that opened like that. I love those sort of boxes and things. I I could just have loads of those and find a use for all of them. Stationery and crafts and cross stitch. That would go well in one of those. I just love them. They're not cheap normally, but I got that one really cheap years ago. I can't remember what I had in it initially. There's something else in there. Yeah, so we've got that nice blue one. So that will eventually go. And these are what I call the brushes that I'm using right now. Apart from, hey, big brushy. <laughs> so 
that's a keep. And it has this little compartment. We have all the pencils. This is the one that needs sorting. So we've got eye and lip crayon. Ooh. It's quite nice. We have a two-way. We have can't see that there we go we have there not much left of that end and it's got the sharpener on there this end purple purple for anyone who's playing this back and just listing, <laughs> it doesn't make much sense. I'm showing my makeup. Oh, I love this one. Not much left of this. Love that one. That's really nice. I don't use this. I think I might put this in my craft box because I don't use it. That's going in my craft box. That's a waste. Oh, <laughs> do you think I need some new makeup? This yes, I've got this one on today. This one's the under eye today. And the brown. So it's green one end and brown on the other. That's brown. And that's green. Brassinol, as we say, in Kipros. Oh, these, I think, are finished. Oh, there's some more in there. Ooh. Hmm. Don't know what's happened with that. Oh, so there is some more in there. Yes. Hmm, now I'm dirty. <laughs> dirty. Dirty finger. Dirty. Oh, what have I done now? I've kind of pulled it all out. Oh, very dirty now. It's all, oh, I'm dirty everywhere now. I think that's going to go to Mike to figure out what on earth. Oh, let's scroll back in there. No, I think Mikey has to sort that out. So I put that there. And now I'm all dirty, dirty tissue. My little tissue roll. <laughs> My little tissue roll. Uh, dirty. <laughs> Don't amuse yourself. Now, this is, I keep saying, I would love to just put my camera up when me and Mike are watching um, things on YouTube. We watch TV, but if it's on YouTube and um, film on, we watch, which is all the English programs for free. And we sit there. And I come out with stupidity most of the time. And it would just be so funny for you guys to watch. I just say things and comment and have a laugh. But I think if I did do that, you guys would think I was making it all up for the camera. It's, it's just hilarious. It really is. Oh, we've got a lid. That might go with that. Yes. Hmm. What it is is every time I want to use, I use a lot of eye pencils, eyeliners. But every time I go to get one out, it's either short and stubby or like this, it's like something's happened to it. Well, that worked then. Well, there's more stuff in there. Hmm. To figure that out. There's something not right with that one. Uh, I need some more eye pencils. So this one, oh look, this one needs sharpening. There's a sharpener. Sharpener. Uh, bless you, we do that. What, comment and have a laugh and... And because my words aren't right, I say the wrong thing. It is more comedy. <laughs> it's even more comedy and might well like me recording him when we're messing around 
<laughs> he was not like there now this is better now you can see the color that one's quite nice i think i actually put that on the top today actually so it was all stuffy and i was trying to do the top i do that i do oh i was on another channel just before my live and i was saying about oh i've got to go now because i've got to get my bits ready for my live I do cut it a bit fine. I'd like I have to type all everything in, remember, because I'm doing it live on YouTube, just webcam. So you have to type everything in, like when you're doing a video, you have to do description and um what else do you do? Uh thumbs and all that. And I was doing all that and so I had to go, but as I say, okay, fine. And I put on hers, I've got to go and get my stuff ready and get out of the bikini. I obviously I still got the top on. I threw a top on top, and she went, "Oh, what? What are you doing? You like you're going swimming? You're putting on a bikini." <laughs> Bless her. Uh, where are we? Tony used to ask me to explain things that were on cooking shows and stuff. Now he doesn't because I tend to explain it like I'm teaching him. Oh, I do that with. Um, oh, what am I always commenting on? But Mike could do it with anything DIY. Anything DIY or mechanical. He goes, why are you doing it like that? You don't do it like that. <laughs> uh, Blue says, I've got into the habit of it. So if I feel it's something to give him context, I stop the show and explain. And he's all, what are you doing now for? <laughs> oh, dear. That one, I think, is just about finished. Yeah, you can't screw it up anymore. I do like these ones where you twist them because you don't have to sharpen. But no, that's, I don't think there's anything left of that one. Let's put that one up there. Well, I'll go right to the grain of these sort of things and I'll use them too. It's like you're literally digging your eye out to get the last bit. That can't be all I've got of eye pencils. That would be criminal because that's what I use. We've got a lid. That's probably from an old black one. I don't oh, I haven't got any black ones. Yes, I have. Where are my black ones? Perhaps they've fallen down. We have this one. Lip liner. I'm not a fond lover of lip liners. Oh, look, that needs sharpening. Look, doesn't it? That's. That's Despicable. Despicable Me. Oh, I love that film. I love Despicable Me. Oh, I do. That's my sort of film. Have to see if anyone's put up on the uh, Pirate yet, the new Minions one. Have to watch that. I like that. I do. That's better. Look, I should have just shown it to you. See, I've got no worries about what people think. <laughs> my makeup people go ah! <laughs> so that's right now no, it's all good it looks looks nice doesn't it so that one's a lip liner so that goes over there what's this here what is it oh it's a lid what's that a lid to don't you like hate to throw things like that way because at some point you go oh that's where that went let's put the two lids up there because we haven't found where they belong Mm, this is despicable, Dawn. Despicable. Oh, I use this a lot. It's a blush. 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 I just like that colour. Blush. Go get back to watching my phone, hon. I'm going to end up feeding Tony cheese sandwiches. He won't be happy yet. You always do your tea when I'm on. Thanks for coming, Blue. Really appreciate it. Thanks for doing that link as well. Thanks very much for coming. And I'll see you soon on your channel. So blush is going over there. That's another one. That's not the big brush. The blusher brush. I have two. Two blusher brush. I tend to do under here. Because... 
I've got tanned skin, obviously, living in Cyprus, but the sun doesn't fully get to here. I don't use, like, base makeup or anything like that. Oh, it's still good. Okay, cool. Um, so I've always done under here because this bit was always a bit lighter than the rest of me. Look, makeup tutorial. <laughs> I am qualified in stage makeup before you panic. <laughs> that is actually part of um, being a professional that you have to do. One of the things is um, stage makeup and all the Lashna numbers and how to do make you look old and just West End stage makeup as well, not just fancy makeup. And I was wanting to do that before... Um, I did dancing full time. I was thinking about being a TV makeup artist and film artist, but I'm going to do that in the end. Oh, in here I've got all my sort of lip balmy things. Balmy, <laughs> lip balmy things. This one I think is a flavour one. I haven't used these for a while. I'm sure these are flavours. Strawberry. Strawberry. I should get these out. They're just sitting in there. Should get those out. Strawberry. Strawberry. Flavors this one. Mmm. Chocolata. Chocolata. Nice. You think that would make your lips go brown? mirror there no puts a sheen on oh that does taste of chocolate <laughs> mm, that's a trouble though if you get a flavor it's not a chapstick it's just like a moisturizer thingy balm but if it's flavored you lick your lips go figure go figure Mm, this one, see if I can read it. Oh, I'm not going to read you that. <laughs> it's a lip balm. I'm not reading you what it says, as in the name. Mm, you smell that? <laughs> it's a bit tropical. Mm, yeah, like pineapple y. Smell it. You smell it? Do you think it's pineapple? Hmm. Ah. Yeah. yeah, I need to take these out of here and that will give me more room in there. This one. This says... Ooh, can't read that either. <laughs> this one. Oh, what's that? Um, hmm, smell it. What do you think that one is? That's... um. I recognise it. Not mint. I not actually say, does it? I can't read it, it's so small. Some, um, not melon. No. It's not fruit. Hmm, don't know what that one is. And then there's this set of three. Does this say? It does say peppermint, raspberry sorbet, and coconut. There's a set of three. Obviously, you need these out because I don't use them enough. These I use all the time. These are in the top. These are like your um, blusher balls. Like, oh, what's the, wait, the one's on the computer now. So I use these all the time. So they're going to stay. This I use the most. It's only small. Put in your bag to go out. But I use it all the time. That's That's my main one. So my dark blusher. It's quite sweet that. That goes in the blusher pile. That's blusher. 
that's brushes, that's eyes. Then powder, I don't use powder anymore. Obviously for shows you had to have powder. You put everything on and powder. And that might be something I'll do on my dancing channel. Actually go through to stage makeup, explain why and things like why dancers have, uh, ballet dancers had buns and different makeup and different techniques. Maybe I'll do that on there. Maybe, maybe. <clears throat> oh, it's a sharpener. And you've got a thick end. I need to clean this off. It's got gunk on it. And a small end. Oh, another lip balm. These are coming out of here. I've now got, you can't see, but under where the whiteboard is, which is next, I've got six drawers. And in there's my odds and ends stationery and files and things like that. And the top drawers, all my bits and pieces, like my sunglasses, and maybe we'll do that drawer one day. And on the top of those, so it's like two small chest, not, not even Chester drawers, like three little drawers, like bedside cabinet size, two of those, a bit bigger than bedside cabinet, but that sort of size. So they're low, three drawers each, one deep drawer in each, and then two smaller. <clears throat> and it was empty on top, I just had ornaments. And what I've done now is, you might see a long time ago on my other channel, Tranquility Through Life's Natural Beauty. What was it, this one? No, it was this channel, Home Alone, one of the Home Alone ones, what I was doing when I was on my own all day. I did a clear out of the cupboard that's in this room. It's like a big wardrobe, and that holds my cross stitch and my craft stuff and all that. And I had in there my jewellery and I sorted it all out for one of the episodes. But now all what I sorted out is actually displayed out on these two sets of drawers now. So I could put all these lip balms on there, just grab them. Let's just say what flavour this is. Strawberry. Oh, gosh, that is so strong, strawberry. That's like made of real strawberries, it smells. You know, when you could, oh, real strawberry. Oh, smell it. Smell it. Oh. I wonder how many of you, when you do it, they go, mmm, strawberry. <laughs> you can, like, you can convince someone enough. If you say, like, oh, can you smell fire, even if you can't, and you pick, oh, and then they go, oh, yeah, I think I can. Psychology, reverse psychology. Uh, what else in this top? Ah, oh, see, they've fallen out. That's what I was looking for earlier. I knew I had a black one. Black eyeliner. Mm, now, that must be one of those lids, is it? No, that's too big. Too big. This is like my life when, you, when I'm not on YouTube. This is like me. This is what I do. So that goes there. We got oh, I see another one. It must be falling down. Another black one, and it doesn't need sharpening. But I'm going to sharpen it because that cleans it up. If only I could find the sharpener. Aha! So, bit of a sharpen. I have got a bin <laughs> under this table. I'm not sharpening onto the floor. So it cleans it up. I have two black ones. I knew I had black. And does a lid fit on that one? There's a black lid. Success. Black lid on black pencil. Hmm. I'm in that top bit now. Oh, we've got a little odd brush for blusher, but I think that's dyed. Look, <laughs> I think that one can go. Because we've got lots of brushes done. And you should always get rid of your brushes regularly. At least wash them and clean them. Oh, and we've got another one of these. This is Eye and Lip Crayon. I do like these. These are pretty nice. So that can go with the... See, do you put that in the eye compartment or the lip compartment? Haha. <laughs> I put it with the eye. Because I use those on my eyes, not my lips. And then all we've got left in that big bit of the top. Oh, we've got another one. Iron lip. 
So it must be a set of three. That's quite a nice colour. What I'm going to do, I've taken it all out and I'm going to wash the whole thing out and then clean all these up before I put them back. Got a little thing, thing, technical. Oh, these have probably got nothing left in them. I had these when I was uh, doing a show. And you wipe them through your hair. So say, hair lights as in highlights. I'm just like, like this. I don't know if there's anything left in there. I really don't think. Is there anything left in that one? I love that colour. I'd love my hair to be that colour. I don't know if you can see it really. Look at the top here. That's the biggest area. That's the colour I would love my hair to be. It's not as vibrant as you guys think it is. It's just when light's on it, it's more vibrant. And then there's this one, Lemon Fizz don't know when I use that or what for. Got no idea. There's probably loads in there then. Is that working? Let me have a look. Oh yeah. Now it makes it look like I've got white hair. Can you see? Look. It looks like I've got white hair now. <laughs> look. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Right, there's some in there, but I don't know what I'd use that for. Okay, that's done that top bit. Let me try and show you. That top bit there is done. Oh, done, shut. Now we've got a little side bit there, and then a big bottom. I've got a big bottom here to sort out. <laughs> okay. So in the side bit, we've got, oh, I use this all the time. It's kind of a bit glittery, but that colour. So it's like um, to go on your eyelids, to be your eyes. And it's a rollable application. There's probably not a whole lot left in there. I do like that. So it's like for your, your eyelids. Love that. Oh, Rimmel. Metal stars. Rimmel metal stores. Stars. Stupid dumb. Roller shadow. Roller shadow. So it's like eyeshadow. That's pretty cool. I like that. Where's that go? That's got to go with eyes. But see, that was on down the side because the pencils were in the tray bit. And then the like eye stuff set. Oh, we've got another um, lip balm. I wasn't a fan of lip balm. I think I was just getting sore lips. I use Vaseline all the time. Every morning I get up and put a bit of Vaseline on. That's what I use, really. But I should be using these, really. Although I keep finding I'm li licking my lips now. So I've got that chocolate one on. And they, they're a bit more tacky, aren't they, the, uh, these? I think I need to throw that one. It's gone liquidy. Yeah, that's going straight in the bin. It's, it's probably the heat here, but that's going. Uh, so, yeah, these are all kind of eyeshadows. That one's... It's not as blue as it looks. It's more, um, oh, what do you call it? More shimmery, more shimmery than a solid colour. That one's nice. I use that one all the time. Something's happened to the lid, though, that one. Where is I stuff? Oh, there. There. What else we got in here? Oh, mascaras are in here as well. That one's a... This one's from Avon. It used to annoy me with Avon. I can't even tell you which way up it goes. But they put everything so small, always. 
and that way I think is the right way up. They write everything so small and dark on dark. So when you pick it up, all of their mascaras at the time I got this one all came dark blue in this design. Look, they could easily put the colour there, but no. So I had a whole array of these all looking the same, but all different colours, brown, black, blue. How do you know which one's which? So I started putting sticky labels on the top so I could label them. But now my eyesight's so bad. That says brown black. Oh, it's a brown black. And I don't like the way you can never really tell how these are running out either. But yeah, that one's okay. This is Maybelline. That's what the advert was. That's mascara. That's a black one. I know that. I want one of those liquid eye pencils. That's what I want. So easy to apply. This is a black mascara i used to use mascara all the time it used to be eyeliner mascara I don't really now should do it's there that's black see what i mean they're exactly the same it's black this one blue that one's blue i do like a blue mascara Nice blue. Ooh, blue. We have an atomizer in there. I don't have my perfume in here, so I'm not sure why that one's in there. So that can go with my perfumes. Oh, this is so dull. Look, I will not throw that away until I can't even hold it to apply it. Ah, was there a lid for that one? <laughs> <Look. Ooh. laughs> so we have that one. See, that got lost. It was so small, it got lost. We could have a mini lid here for something. That goes over there. another brush in there i don't know why there's a brush in there hi that thing's tiny hi blind neil <laughs> how are you watching this is me just being me now I'm, i did do a show <laughs> i did a show but i really want to sort my makeup so if you want to see my content you have to go back to the beginning and my hair is yellow yes did you see me trying it out <laughs> So I don't know why a brush is separate there. Ah, this I got for my wedding. I just like, look, look, slide. You could just slide this on and off the lid and it doesn't go anywhere or break off. So I had silver eyeshadow for my wedding. So that's quite old now really, isn't it? Uh, where's our stuff gone? Where's all this stuff gone? Oh, it's there. It's there. And, oh, my goodness. Well, that, that won't even, you think, small. There you go, Neil. That's a nice shadow. That's going in the bin, uh, Nothing else in there. Hello. I've got a cat. It's, oh, it's Mr. Waffles again. He wants to be on the live. So that's the two top bits done. The top and the side are now done. That little shelf was in the big top bit. And now just got to do the bottom bit. And then I'm going to have my dinner. So in the bottom, more brushes. Now the reason these brushes are separate, these are ones I haven't used yet. So these are what I call clean and new. So I don't like to use all of them. And then you have some you use, some you don't. So these are ones I haven't used in here. So you've got all sorts going on. That's why I threw that other blusher one away. I've got plenty of brushes. What on earth is that? Oh, look, that's just the handle. 
So that's obviously, oh yes, look, it's broken off of this one. But well, that's no good, is it? Look, and that's not been used. Have to, yeah, it's just going to come off. So I'll put that up for fixing. And that's brand new. But we find this here, the heat is uh, anything that's glued comes apart. Anything plastic goes brittle. Cats hear you talking to yourself, so come and check on their humans. <laughs> uh, yeah, they've had their dinner, so it's not that. Yeah, so I've got a little holder. So I've got all new brushes there. There's a few in there. See, now technically I could actually put some new ones out on my jewellery area. So I think I'll put that. Don't you just go and diving? I'm back. And then we've got more powder. Oh, no, this isn't. This is like a shimmer blusher. Shimmer blusher. There. Uh, little mirror. No, there's no point that being in there, really. Can you see yourself? Can you see yourself? Oh, look, you can see my Thunderbirds behind me. It's fine, Virgil. There's brains. Secret mission brains. Scott. Alan. Virgil. <laughs> Yay, look, I'm spying. Let's see if we can see you guys. Where's you guys? Ooh, there you are. There you are, guys. Can you see yourselves? <laughs> ah, so, yeah, we don't need that mirror in there. Now, as far as I remember, the bottom tray, oh, there's another atomizer, autonomizer, atomizer, depends which country you're from. So there's another one of those. That shouldn't be in there, really. It's no purpose. I wouldn't use it in there. So in the bottom here should be all lips. So we did have a lips uh, liner, didn't we? That's got to come out. Then you're going this. These are all old samples in here. And also the small lipstick that I was using for those. So they're there. We have the reason these are separate. Separate. I made this. I make um, baskets, paper baskets is because this one is silver so it was obviously for something something blue lots of colors you wait till you see the lipsticks blue and this why is it clear what's that i have to get a magnifying glass I don't know why it's clear like that, what that is, whether it's a lip balm or sealer or something. I'd have to look that up with a magnifying glass. Oh, we have another brush. Oh, one of these. I don't use these. No point in these. They're going in my craft box. I'm getting to the stage if I'm not using something, it's going or it goes to somewhere where I, where I will use them. That's why I say my jury's out. Because then I see it and I'll pick a different one each time. Got makeup brushes of uh, sponges. So these have fallen down from the top. We have an empty container that probably had a brush in it. It should be lips or lips. Okay, so in the bottom we have divided up a tin. So these are different sorts of lips. Oh, another brush. I'm going to sort these brushes out. You know what I'll be doing tomorrow. <laughs> Cleaning all this up and throwing some. Another empty container for a brush. Okay, these. Oh, another one for a brush. They're all empty containers. Mine's all still in storage because I... Because I don't, don't wear it much anymore because what I used to do doesn't work on my face anymore. I honestly don't have the energy to bother figuring it out. Yeah, 
they say the way you love it. Oh my goodness. Um, they say that that you know when you get some people look like to say it politely, a dog's dinner, <laughs> as we say in England. It's because they keep their makeup and their clothes and their hairstyle the same. Sometimes one or two of those things will be okay, but altogether it's not right. So, yeah, you have to, as I say, I used to do, uh, now I really just focus on my eyes. Sometimes I put a bit of lipstick and blusher on, but I really don't do anything much else. Doesn't help my face twice the size it was. You have to emphasize the bit you want. And the um, reason I do my eyes is I look more healthy. Some people say, oh, you do them too dark. But if I didn't, I'd look, they're not piggy eyes, but because I'm so um, unwell, whatever you want to say, that if I don't emphasize my eyes, I look like death, death warmed up, as they say. So, that's why I focus on my eyes, really. And then because my eyes are quite dark then, that's why I wear lipstick, because you've got to balance it out a little bit. So, yes, in this tin is any weird different sorts of lip stuff. So we've got like a gel lip. Let's put them in that one. I thought I had two of those gel ones. These are my nice stuff. We have one of these ones, which is like a Q-tip, as they say, or cotton bud, or spongy, a that, whoa, spongy application stick. So these are quite nice. So I've got that colour, which I'd like my hair to be. This colour, a dark brownie colour. Oops, stuck in the dent. That colour. And it's quite nice if you've got these sort of things, blend them. Blue says, oh, I get it. Days like that, I stick on my glasses on if I'm going to see anyone so they can't see me. Yeah, I wish I suited hats. I really don't suit hats. I think it's my head shape or I've got a couple that are okay, but I can't wear like baseball caps or anything. I look weird. I wish I could just shove a hat on sometimes. <laughs> oh, that's a nice one. That's kind of like hologram glitter. And you know I love hologram hologram oh look hologram i like the silvery hologram though this one this one looks like it's finished yeah that, that one's going in the bin there's nothing in there that one sounds a bit squidgy it's sort of a pinky purpley color oh this i used to use a lot i've forgotten i had it in here it's another one of those sort of roller application things. Neil says, tickle that thumbs up, coming or going or catching the rerun. Thank you. No, thank you, Neil. Thank you, Neil. Blue says, yeah, nothing beats a good hat or a pair of sunnies. <laughs> Unless you're indoors. Yeah, so this is like a roll application and it's supposed to be, I think, candy floss or something. Sugar, sugar top gloss top gloss mmm mmm tasty <laughs> I won't need my tea <laughs> that's that and then there's three little mini things Neil likes the little mini stuff I think these might be in no I don't think they were samples I think it came in I've got more makeup in the cupboard this is kind of what's in here that doesn't smell very thing. That's a really sort of cherry colour, that one. Blue says, I'm good with weather indoors. I can pretend I'm someone incognito. <laughs> so you've got a dark red. A red red. That was something else with stage makeup. You always had to have the um, 70s blue and 70s red lipstick. And there's reasons for that. 
Ooh, that's a funny colour. What would you call that? Actually, to me, it looks more beigey. But when I show it to you, it looks a bit more silvery. It's beigey. It's actually beigey. And there's those. So that's oh, that's not all the lips. That's all the odd lip things. Now, actual. Oh no, I've got this before we do actual lipsticks. So the lid there. So we have this. This is ruby lips. It's a whole thing palette of lips. Some of those, I'm just not sure why you would wear those colours. I mean, lilac. Something going on outside. That might be my foot, might be Oh, <coughs> can't see. Then we've got actual lippy sticks. And again, so I didn't have to keep opening them all, I did a blob of the colour of each one on the top. So that's a good tip for anyone who's got lots of lipsticks and you don't know which is which. Of course, if you're doing multiple storage, you might want to put it on the side. But if you've got storage where you can see all the tops... Do a little blob of the colour and you can see exactly because I've got a lot of nail varnishes that match lipsticks. Uh, grey, laugh out loud, don't you see it grey? Uh, blue says flower fairy colours, hun, things like lilac. <laughs> cool. So yeah, obviously I won't take all the lids off because I'll just show you the colours on the edge. So we have da. Let's move that back a bit so I can put them at the front. Oh, now what I do mostly, I tend to wear the bright pinks for summer and then I get darker in seasons and then I mostly wear the darker lipsticks, um, autumn, winter. And then the spring comes, I do the more neutral colours and then back to the brights again. Hey, Jimmy. <laughs> Makeup tutorial. Look, they made me do yellow hair. Can you see my yellow hair? Ah, they made me do yellow hair. By the time I finish, every time I get something out, Jimmy, I'm putting it on. I'm going multiple colours. I'm going to look like a clown. I have to come up on your live tomorrow. <laughs> and you'll be like, okay, Dawn, I know where you look like that. That's not your colour. You're more of an autumn. <laughs> yeah, where you live. Autumn place. Yeah, so I've got lots of reds because, as I say, when you uh, do professional work, you have to have the dark red and you have to have the specific shade. As I say, last year, you get the colours, you know, the numbers. You can't just go and get a red or whatever. So, yeah, I've got skin tones. As I say, a lot of these match my nail varnishes, which I did show in another vid. So at one point, I did sit down and sort all these out in order of colour, which I will probably do again. This is one of my favourites, but there's not much left. It's just a knobbly now. But you know me, not throwing it away till it's gone. <laughs> Blue, if you are about still, if you can put up um, channel links would be appreciated for those coming in another time so i like that one i don't know if you can see that one it's sort of a peach a peach a red oh jimmy if you watch my video from today that i posted today you'd be in it again <laughs> you'd be in it jimmy that one, Neil will like that one. Look, Neil, how big that one is. Can you see that, my friend? He likes my little tiny ones. That is it, look. Hold it that way and then you can see. Actually, that gold's pretty neat, isn't it? You can see things quite well with that. Ooh, thanks, my friend. Give me two seconds. Huh? Yeah, no pressure. No pressure. No pressure. Get on with it. No pressure. <laughs> you will watch. Yeah, you're in it. 
If I tell you it's showing one of my Mondays, you could always fast forward because I've put the times up as in like a, not a thumbnail, a like photo card thing throughout the video saying what time of day it is. So you could always fast forward to what time it might have been, Jimmy. <laughs> it's following me on a random Monday. Oh, that's a dark one. Ooh, that's like really dark. That was like, no, worse than that was my school uniform colour. The darkest maroon you can think of was my school uniform colour for um, high school. There we go. Thanks, Blue. <laughs> Thanks, Blue. That one, see, again, that's, well, it's not quite purple, is it? You probably see it different to me. I need to run. Oh, got your trainers on, your sneakers. <laughs> See you tomorrow, Jimmy. Much love. There's that one. Oh, another small one. Oh, this is a big small one. A <laughs> big small one. No, a big small one. These, I think, all samples. All samples. It was actually, if any of you know who David Hamilton is, he was an old DJ. Um, he married my sister's friend and she used to do like makeup parties so we went to their house and that's where all those little samples are from now this is spectacular the brand this is what matches most of my nail varnishes spectacular although i have got some other ones as well that match nail varnishes but i used to go in um once a week into croydon and they got a like an indoor it's not a market, they're actual shops, but like stalls, but they're proper shops, indoors. And that's where I got which piercing of the ears? Mm, that one, that one, and possibly the two higher of the bottom ones. Got my ears pierced there. And I always used to go in and buy several... Um, spectacular lipsticks and nail varnishes and there was like hundreds hundreds um yeah the bottom two ears i had done in claire's which i don't know who knows claire's it's sort of a kiddie type jewelry bracelets hair bands that sort of shop i think they go in america i had those own claire's because first time and all that but I've since heard a lot of people say Claire's isn't very good, but I was all right with them. And I had those done after I got married. Um, no, before I got married. Yeah, I had those done in England. Silly me, what am I talking about? Um, so I had those up when I left home. When I left home, I had those done because my parents didn't allow me to have ears pierced. So I had those done when I left home. And then these, I can't remember how much longer later I had them done, but I, I always planned on having doubles here. I'd always plan, I didn't want one. So I then went to this shop in Croydon, had those done, had that done. They went, oh, that hurt up there. Of course it doesn't. And then I wanted this day to wear ear cuffs. And I really liked it. And I was like, right, I'm going to get piercing. Oh, that really hurt there. No, didn't. <laughs> I do have to make sure I put this in every few days. One here. This one doesn't close up. This one tries to a little bit, tries to close up. Sometimes the higher ones of the sides do as well. Sometimes they do. But this one, I have to. I had to re-pierce it myself at one point because I'd left them out for a, a little while so I, I redid it with a pin a pin that hurt that hurt quite a bit that did <laughs> that hurt quite a bit but I wouldn't let that go again if that went I'd have to have it redone but they say you shouldn't keep having it redone so oh this is a bit vibrant we're nearly finished nearly finished guys so that one's there Mm. Ooh. Ooh, this is a spectacular one. 
It's like, it looked like licorice. It's black. Let's put it on the white. Ooh. Looks like licorice. If you've got lipstick in a hot, hot country like Cyprus, you need to every now and then actually really stick them in the fridge. Everything melts. Gold. Hmm. See what that would look like. Scoozy. I've got so many layers on, but I think the gold would match the yellow hair. No. <coughs> that doesn't show very well. Can you see it? Hmm. Yeah, I can see it a bit. You can see it a bit, gold. And we got, oh, I like this one. I wear this one quite a lot. That's quite a nice colour. Another one. I'm not really, I don't like reds really. I'll do the dark, dark, dark colours, but not reds. Whether that's a sort of classy thing, class thing, or whether it's because to me that's dancing, stage work, makeup. I think red lips on someone, some people can carry it off, but some it's just like, whoa, <laughs> whoa. Oh, that's a nice colour. But again, that wouldn't really show up very well, would it, on your lips? No, let's put another layer on this. <laughs> I've got like loads of undercoat now. Oh, yeah. Oh, actually, that does. Can you see? Look. Oh, yeah. So I had three calls at once. You're fine. Look, I've just put another layer on. This is nice. That. I didn't think that would show up. Maybe it's because I've got about four layers of different lipsticks now. <laughs> I have to get the house ready for film on Wednesday a week early. <laughs> okay. And then we've got, I think there's about four more. So we have this one. I don't know if you can see it very well that way. Now that colour. I think I have to go and tag lipsticks and makeup in the title. Then we have, yeah, see, I'll do this. I'll do the dark colour, but not reds. So that will be my sort of winter one, and I'll dampen that down with something. I won't wear it thick, that colour. So it's a wintry colour. Three more. That one, that looks a bit similar in the screen to that other one I liked, but that's more peach. So I should have put the backlight on actually. But I'm nearly finished now. Oh, that, that's quite vibrant. Looks fairly vibrant. Yeah, that's vibrant. Got another brush in there. And last one, yay, last one. Oh, that one's nice. That's kind of more neutral, more neutral colour. That's quite nice. So now the job is, wash my hands, clean all this up, clean the case up, work out what is actually going back in there i've got stuff to fix there and stuff to throw up on the bookcase there all this needs sorting out the lip balms i'm going to put out <clears throat> with the jewelry so i can literally grab it and use it rather than pulling out all the makeup and there's a couple of lipsticks to go through again and put in the fridge basically and yeah so that's a bit of a sort out more of a go through but I have sorted, there's a lot of rubbish up there and lids, at least now I know those lids don't have anything to go on. So thanks very much for being here. We've had a laugh as per normal. Don't forget, I'm back here on Wednesday. And Wednesday, I will be talking about why we declined doing the TV show that is now starting the series on English television. 
and explain about that. So if I forget to talk about that, do remind me that that's what you were going to talk about, Dawn. Okay. I think about making a video of it, and I thought, no, let's just chat about it, and then you can have your conversation direct with me rather than me answering those questions at the end. So tune in for that. If you don't know my start times of my live, it's below in the description, my times. And don't forget, do look at Peter Dell's channel and let him know that I sent you there. So have a great day. Be positive, be productive and choose to be happy. Until next time, Maraki.